Hi oh, guys, Harry Sunday here, letting you know that there's a apparel company that supports the game that you love. It's called There Is Only One Football.com. Guys, they've got all sorts of stuff from caps, t shirts, water bottles, all sorts of accessories, even for your mobile phone. All that sporting stuff you can wear anywhere you want to wear it, guys. That's right. And don't forget the website it's on There Is Only One Football.com. Don't never stop What's going on here? Ah, we uh, shouldn't know well, we'll Gotta be strong. be strong We gotta be strong We shouldn't know Right from the right top from And the when top. you feel and the heat you feel The, the world is at the your feet The world is at your feet No one can hold you back Nobody If you really you want it Are you gonna get it? Hey, oh. I feel it in your soul We've You want the cup of life, of life. Now the days here You're gonna get it Do I really want it? Do you really want it? He's gonna get it right now Hey! We go, oh, we go. Ali, Ali, Ali. We'll be going up. Good, good, go. All right, guys. Tonight we got Mr. Carlos Vielli. Yes, from Carlos Planet Football, Bielli. that planet of football yeah. in New South Wales. And yes, we got a gentleman here right now. He's got a golden boot to talk about as well. A Mr. Mark Cousas, guys. Froppy, we are the passion. Golden we are the psychos. We are the psychos, psychos of Australia. It's our way, the highway, Froppy. Tell me right now, please. Did you say golden boot or golden tooth? Because my grandfather bloody, had a golden the tooth. The bloody boot, mate. Jesus. So Mr. Cousas has got a golden tooth, has he? Uh, right now, we're going to bring him on. Are you ready? Are you there, Mark? Well, hold on. What's going on? A bit yeah, boys, I'm here. Mark, guess what? I hope you got your straight jacket on tonight, mate. We're going to make you crazy just well, like Carlos. Are you there? Uh, is Carlos there? We, we all there? Carlos? Well, I'm here. Well, we're not all here, I suppose. Are you still there, boys? Of course uh, you are. Now, now, listen, Harry. Now, yes. Before can, we, uh, Yes. Listen, listen. Can I go get straight to the point here, please? Uh, just let me get this off. We've got uh, a big complaint here. A big complaint. About uh, who? I'm not going to do this. We're going to see you in a, in a who few minutes. Who is complaining? We haven't even started. They're complaining. They're complaining about us, yes. Uh, well, who is it? Can, can you tell everyone who it is? The guy's a psycho. The guy's a psycho. <laughs> Don't worry. Well, listen. Uh, now, 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 Quickly. Now, well, I'll make this very quick. Uh, last week, the YMCA opened up the uh, new pool at my house. Around Beautiful. The pool of my joint and the uh, gymnasium. Do they do that? nude bathing? And uh, No, they don't. They don't. Uh, well, listen. What I, about nude, nude water I, polo? Now, you should get your ass down there, mate, because oh, of well, the we'll cheap be there subscriptions. For sure. I am dead set serious. They are cheap because it, the corona's in and the virus. Beautiful, and, uh, beautiful. Really cheap. Let's uh, start again. Subscriptions. Subscriptions. Uh, now I, I've joined up and... Um, Inscription. Now, I can't say this too loud. Please don't. But they had an open session only for like trials. You know, they I check all you your mean, body yeah. fat and they of course, check yes, this, they yes, check yes, that. Yes. Now, I'm not supposed yes. to be saying this, but then again, nobody yes. watches the show. What do you mean? Yes. No one's going to know. Oh, well, uh, well, listen, I got on the treadmill, Harry. You better hurry up. I got on the treadmill for 45 minutes. Now, are you proud of me? 
Uh, some cow I am. Well, and next week I'll be switching it on. Uh, <laughs> He well, switches it on. That's I didn't they say I use the treadmill. I yeah. got on the treadmill. Okay, we have fine. to start. Now, right. Mark Cousas, uh, good evening to Ooh. Mr. What's that? Can you see us already, mate? Mark, you there? Good evening, Mark. How are you, sir? Good evening, guys. I'm very well, thank you. Uh, listen, Mark, can I just start off quickly to get this off the uh, off and running? Can I can I give you Frothy's 30-second shot clock? Oh, hey, no. do, you, do you reckon you're up to it? You better hurry up. We've got 30 oh. seconds. You reckon you're getting all seconds. the correct answers? I should be able to survive 30 seconds. Okay, here we go. Dogs or cats? Dogs. Favourite movie? Uh, Godfather. How did I know he was going to say that? How did I know? I swear to Allah. I I shouldn't say Uh, (laughs) Allah. Hardest opponent? What was that? Hardest opponent. Hardest opponent? Yes. Peter Wilson. Absolutely. Him? How do you like your steak? Sorry, I didn't get that either. How do you like your steak? How do I like my steak? Medium rare. Thank you. Coffee or tea? Coffee. Best soccer player of all time. What's the time, Harry? What's going? How how are we going? Uh, That's it. Done. Maradona. Absolutely. Twitter or Instagram? 27 seconds of counting, uh, Mark. Neither. Uh, Vanilla or chocolate? Chocolate. 29 seconds. Corona, real or not real? Not real. Ooh. Mark, welcome to the show. Welcome well, to the I, show. I've got one more question for Make you. Make it quickly. Uh, dis- when I say not real, I'm talking about the beer, Corona beer. Oh, that one. Oh, <laughs> Jesus. Well, Mark. You're right. Mark, he, you had me worried there for a moment, mate. He's right. Uh, and now just one last thing, because uh, you young guys these days, you uh, grew up with the old disco music. Now, is it disco or rock and roll for you, Mark? Uh, for me, it was rock and roll. My wife was disco. Rock and uh-huh. roll. So were you one of those rockers at the old nightclubs of the long sideburns thought you were the Fonz? Does that describe you? Um, Elvis. Ooh, I think he's going to say yes here, Harry. What's that, Elvis? I think so. That's what you were. So you were one of those uh, guys in the nightclubs back in the eighties with the, the long sideburns and the Elvis hairstyle. <laughs> well, it's one for the money, <laughs> two one for the, the show. Come on, baby, let's go. 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 Put on the blue shoes. Now, now, no, Mark, Harry Mark, Mark, right now, Mark. Well, what are we, we are going to talk about your time at Sydney Olympic Absolutely. and we're going to go to the Young Soccer Roos. So Let's how did you start serious. at Olympic? We're going to say this before you start. Do you recognise this? Olympic, now, hold, Olympic, hold, hold, hold. What about the Olympic. Shirt? Do you remember that one <laughs> no, at all? I don't remember know that at watching, all? but we got the Olympic shirt here. There we go. Yeah, Harry, we got the Olympic shirt. Well, you'll, you'll see it on the Olympic, replay, Mark. Olympic, Olympic. There you go. Yeah. Yeah, Mark remember that? Did you remember those days? I'm sure you were at Patton Park. We yes, were there, mate. Yes, we, were, we were the ones who got throwing tomatoes at us. Bloody uh, rotten apples. <laughs> Bloody hell, mate. Believe it or not, Harry and I were there once upon a time. But uh, uh, we got bashed because we're South Melbourne. I'm not going to go No, there. no, North uh, Melbourne, actually. The North Melbourne, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Now, we got Carlos on as well. Carlos, we're going to get to you in a few moments. Now, Mark, you're That's all right. I'm here. Now, you start. Where did you start your game? Now, who pushed you into this lovely when someone says, the beautiful game? The beautiful game. What? Uh, what's his name? That bloody Warren. What's it? Uh, Johnny Warren. Yeah, he used to say Warren. that. The beautiful game. I yeah. told you so. Yeah. Yes. Look, I um I started at five years of age when Ooh. a local policeman knocked on the front door and oh, was he was basically looking for some players and um, convinced my parents to let me go and play with him. So he was a local sergeant. Ooh, play, play with you. Okay, I get you. Uh, yeah, the, the thing yeah. about this is, so so you fell in love at that time with the game. Of course he did. Yeah, I just um, look. It was for me. It was exciting. I mean, five years of age. You know, we were just playing sport. I just wanted to play, so it didn't really matter. It didn't take long for me to get uh, to fall in love with the game. Oh, I know um, you did. I know you did. We're about to tell you. Yeah. Took to it. Took to it like a duck to water. Now let's just talk Football about is. now. Was Olympic your like first? Was Olympic your first club, or C- did you have a junior C- club? City Law. The um, so in, in juniors, I played reps for Glazer Hornsby and Western yes. Suburbs. Yes, Hornsby. And then, and then, and then from there, so I played with Jimmy Patikas and, and, and Ian Gray and that at West. Yes. Ooh. And um, and then and Sydney Olympic picked, picked me up. So I basically went into senior soccer at Sydney Olympic. Yes. Played in the played in the uh, state league levels with with them, and then moved into the what used to be called the PSL. The back Phillips then, League. And, um, and there it is right there. Now. The thing is, yeah. how many years did you play? Now you played with a lot of big players in that in that team, mate. Honestly, at that time, you were how old were you at the time when you when you're in that senior team? At Sydney Olympic, yes. Well, I joined Sydney Olympic when I was sixteen. Yes, and um, I pretty much um, so that was in '79, and I pretty much 
became a regular in 81 Jeez. under Tommy Doherty when he came out. Aha. Uh-huh. So you, you and, were there when that bloke was there. Really funny stories about him, that's for yes, sure. We yeah. heard lots of things yeah, yeah, about yeah. Tommy. So Doherty. I was 18. I was 18 at that, at that, at that age. I was 18. And then so he was came leading. the young Socceroos. The young, yes, yes. Who That's was what your, we yeah. want to talk about. Who now. was your coach? Your coach was the boss. Was it the boss? Could have been the boss. Yeah, good old Les Seinflug was oh, um, our manager. Is yep, this how he spoke? Coach. Now, Mark, you must do 10 laps, please. No more than that. And do the push-ups. Thank you. Yes. Is that how he speaks? <laughs> Is that right? <laughs> Yeah, he was a disciplinarian, but we had oh, Ralph Blanco there too, and Ralph Ralph was like, uh, he was the well, he was Harry, a nicer guy. That's right. <laughs> Can I just say yes, that maybe. impersonation? Is that the right word I'm looking for? Impersonation, yes. That sound like a gay Arnold Schwarzenegger. Jesus, uh, nothing against gay people. We love <laughs> now, gay people. Love Carlos, do you have any well. questions for Mark? We love all people. Carlos, you there? I think Carlos is going yes, to sleep. I'm here. Hello, have Harry. some questions for Mark. Yes, look, Tommy Doherty was a coach that had an amazing career uh, at a broad Manchester United, you name it, Tommy, yes. had coach. How did he make you a better player, Mark? When you look when you look back in those heydays of the Olympic, how did Tommy Doherty make you a better player? Well, Carlos, um, he, he basically, at the time at Olympic, there was a, a lot of changes happening. Um, it was a big move for the club to bring Tommy Doherty to Australia because, I mean, you know, as you said, he's an absolute legend of the game. And um, Tom Tom came and basically put the cleaners through the team, got rid of some older players that had been around for a while and basically just let some young players have a go. And I was one of those. Um, and he just encouraged the, the team in general just to um, to play attacking football. Um, so anybody that, that, you know, that was around in those days would remember the type of football we used to play was actually quite exciting. We actually didn't win any titles under Tommy, but, uh, under Tommy, but um, we were pretty much, you know, in the papers every week. They were pretty much saying that we were like playing the best football in the country. So um, so you know, like his his legacy is um, you know, building up the confidence of the youngsters and just encouraging them to have a go and not be scared to make mistakes. Okay, that is a good one. I've got one here for you, Mark. Now, what do you who who actually recruited? The trial that you went and did for the uh, yes. uh, 81 Youth World Cup, which was in our country, of course, that was massive yep. for us. I don't know whether we're going to see another another World Cup type of it. Well, the women's is coming, mm. of course, in 2023. Interesting. But now, who actually got you to that team? The trials, were you, were you rang? Somebody rang you up, come and join us. We want to talk to you. What's going on? How did they contact you? Well, basically, um, it was that same time when Tommy Doherty put me, uh, you know, gave me confidence to play in the team and I was starting to score some goals. Um, the, the team, the youth team had already been in camp for about a year, a year and a half yep. in preparation. And so I came onto the scene really late. Um, as it turned out, I, I was scoring a few goals. So um, Les Scheinflug was still looking for players. So um, Les got in touch through the club. And I think probably John Constantine, the manager, uh, the, the president, um, w- would have received the call, I'm guessing. Yes. I, can't, I really honestly can't remember. But yeah. um, they basically... Uh, um, advised me that I'd been called up for um, mm. for camp, and you know, basically went from there. I, um, uh, you know, I was dreaming about making the squad, let alone the team. So I can't believe that I even, you know, got as far as I did. Now, a lot of players, when they get those type of phone calls, they say, "Is this bullshit? Who is who? Who is who's calling? Who's this? Is that right?" I bet you, you thought, "Is this for real?" It always happens, doesn't it? Somebody calls you and they say something's like, "This is a hoax, isn't it?" Is that right? Yeah. You thought that, look, didn't you? It always happens. Back then, there was nothing. Crossed, it probably crossed my mind. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think I don't think I said it was bullshit, but um, <laughs> I probably didn't believe it either. <laughs> okay. Frothy? Well, it was a dream come true. Anyone who could represent their country, Harry, may I add, uh, it's an achievement, regardless where the country is situated on the, the FIFA ladder. Is that how you call it? Exactly, yes, uh, the well, table. Well, the table back then, with the, the Socceroos would have been uh, probably lower than what they are now, Mark, would they be? What is the young Look, we, had a, we, we had a bit of a rough period there with the Socceroos. Yes. So, um, at that time, we actually didn't qualify for the 1982 World Cup. Um, but our youth teams were uh, evolving, and so I think we were like, um, the 1979 youth team was a very strong team um, yes. that didn't quite mm. qualify for the World Youth Championships, um, but you now they had um, you know some very good players there like um, Fias Alamides and Scopolis and oh, yeah yeah so Eddie, Eddie Krenchevic oh that's God. right you know Mitchell, David um, Mitchell um, Alan Davidson I think was a part of was that it, team. Uh, 
that a South Melbourne fellow, the Argentinian background fellow, what's his name? North Melbourne. Oscar North Green. Melbourne. Sorry, what's his, Oscar Green. Oscar? Oscar. Oscar. That's right. He was there, wasn't he? Yeah. I'm not sure if Oscar was there in 79, but he was a part of my team. So Oscar okay. was a key player in, in my team. Yep. Anyway, um, the, the, the youth level in, in Australian soccer um, evolved. And so those guys started it. And then we absolutely, you know, we did really well in the championships. I mean, in our competition, we were pretty much drawn in a group of death. We had England, Argentina, and Cameroon in our group, and we surprised everybody with what we did. Unbelievable. And um, and you know, and then and, and the rest is history. Like the next 10, 15 years, we've had some very strong youth side. So yes, we we, we got to Australia got to a point where we were very strong at youth level, and then this, you know, from that the senior side got better and better. Yes. Um, but unfortunately, unfortunately, in recent times, it's um, it's been quite difficult to to follow through, especially after the um. The golden generation that we we've had it in recent times. Yeah, yeah. Now, the thing, Mark, I'll I'll ask you right now, um, to play against these these teams, these other countries. Wait, yeah. how did you feel in that environment playing internationals? You're playing internationals in your own country, in our own backyard. How did you yeah. feel? Was it more special? Electrifying. Uh, look, it was playing in front of our own supporters. Yes. I mean, I'm getting goosebumps there now. You go, just there you go. There you go. So are we. You know. You know, it was just amazing the reception that we received just walking into the stadium before the games and stuff. It's like, it's surreal, you know, you, you can't explain it. And, um, you know, I, I never really made a lot of money out of the game, but you know what, with the experiences and the memories and everything that, and the opportunity that I had, I wouldn't stop it for the world. Absolutely. Frothy? Uh, well, look, I would say, I would say, Harry, and I bet you the, the boys will agree, the 82 squad, the Socceroos, uh, that was probably just as good as any squad, really. A bit unlucky not to qualify, I suppose, because, uh, like you said, look, if we dig up the names, uh, if you had them running around today, they could easily uh, qualify for a World Cup, even That's though they right, were exactly. uh, semi-professionals. Uh, yes. But, um, well, fortunately, unfortunately, the 2006 squad stands out because they did so well, did. which is the golden generation. But some people don't understand that before that, uh, there were teams there that could, um, well, put it this way, if it was a possible fantasy match, we call it, Harry. Of course. You get the 82 Socceroos to play the 2006 Socceroos. Yes. Uh, look, we would never know, but as far as skill goes and, uh, you know, player ability and um, just pure, you know, greatness of the players in 82, they're, yes. they are just as good as the 2006. I mean, we never saw it, but um, mm. take nothing away from the 80s. Uh, now, now uh, sorry, uh, uh, Nick, Nick. Mark. Mark, sorry oh. about that, Mark. Uh, you said <laughs> you said soccer before, and we get fined $5 from exactly, David Penn. Exactly, Mark. See what happened to us? Every time someone says uh, the word soccer. <laughs> uh, but it doesn't right. matter. Just send, me, just send me the bill. Oh, no, no. Sorry. Harry, there is only one football. Harry, no Harry is loaded. Yeah. He will pay. Oh, yeah. uh, now, now uh, Mark, if I, I'm going to mention these two names. We're going to see how good your knowledge is on the great game. Um, okay. I'm going to say Pacific. Now, this is true, this. Pacific, uh, Pacific Neon Gambray. And Antone Burke Gilroy. Now, they're not rappers from England. The bloody Do you know who they are? Well, I've got you, Harry. Now, let's see if Mark can answer this question. Who do you think these two young gentlemen are? Ali G. Well, I'll give you a clue. They are, well, they're Africans. They could be from <laughs> Nigeria. They could be from Uganda. They could be from Macedonia. Not Macedonians. Aren't the Ivory Africans, Coast. Are they? The Ivory Coast. Well, oh, well, they are, well, obviously, only I know the answer. Uh, they are the two new signings for Perth Glory. Oh, Jesus. Uh, now, Kill Kenny is uh, left the glory. He's gone to the ninjas. Do you know that, Harry? Oh, I don't care about them. Uh, well, it's a good signing. But uh, these two young fellas, obviously you guys have no idea who I'm talking about, have you? No. I have no idea. No idea. Well, I've seen it because I'm an A-League fan, so uh, probably the only one on tonight, I suppose. But... Uh, I like it. Uh, no, I, I love like it. it. I, I love want it. some more I want of some it. More and, and more of it too. But uh, uh, now, listen, uh, Marcus. Uh, look, uh, is there a team these days in the A League that you actually follow? Oh you, no! You, is your heart somewhere near? Uh, look, I, I am a member of Sydney FC. Ooh, um, well, well, they, well, they were the first team in Sydney to play in the A League, so I've been following them since they started. Well, um, I do have a spot. You know, being a Sydney person, I have a soft spot for the Wanderers. Uh -huh. um, um, so pretty much I, I, I follow both sides very closely, but when they have the derby, I prefer to watch Sydney FC beat the Warriors. Wait till, wait till, you, see, wait till you see our shirts on the TV. Wait well, till you see them. No Worse than sitting now. Carlos, are you there? Go Is for Carlos it. still with us? Uh, I'm still here. Mark, 
how did in exposure to international football make you a better player? Look, for me, it was the opportunity to, when I was preparing for this international tournament, um, it gave me the opportunity to be, become virtually a full-time player. Back in those days, we were part-timers. Uh, even the rugby league stars of the day all had part-time jobs. They all had, sorry, full-time jobs and were all part-time players. So, you know, my, my typical, um, my day would be just go to work Monday to Friday during normal hours and then after hours, you'd be going straight to the ground to go and do some training three or four times a week. So um, when when um, when the opportunity came up to actually, like I finally got selected playing for Australia and we were preparing for the World Youth Championships, um, we did a lot of travelling uh, to, you know, to the Pacific Islands and whatever else, going into camp, um, did a lot of extra training. I basically stopped working. I stopped working for a year. And, um, and that, you know, that extra training, I did one-on-one -on -one training with Rob Blanco, um, so, you know, when the time came and I got to October when the when the championship was on, um, I can honestly say I pretty much um, was playing the best football of my life. Amazing. He said football. There. Yes. Now, he what I want to ask you is, is, to, to, is you're the golden boot winner of 1981, yes, right? Yes. What was but, going through your head scoring those goals? Did you think you would ever get there to get that boot? Of or course what? he did. He was confident. <laughs> now, be honest, guys, be honest. I'll, I'll be honest with you. I honestly didn't even think I'd be in the team, let alone dream about winning the top scorer. Jesus. So, so when Ralph, uh, when Les Schoenflag, um dropped the bombshell and told me to, you know, a couple, I think it was a couple of nights before the opening game yep. that I was starting, um, I was I was actually quite shocked and I couldn't sleep. Um, I was so anxious and excited. So, um, and then yeah, our first game was against Argentina, and um, <laughs> you know we just we went into that game thinking. We just don't want to embarrass ourselves. We're playing against the reigning world champions. Absolutely. I mean, the the, pre, the previous team, two years earlier than that, had Maradona in the team. Gee. So, you know, we're, we're talking about some serious quality players here. <laughs> anyway, um, That's right. cut a long story short, we ended up winning that game right at the death, and I scored a goal, and oh. that was all exciting. And then, then we played Cameroon, and I got a couple of goals in that one. And then, then I scored probably what I considered my best ever goal against England. In the third game, so suddenly I found myself on four goals. Uh -huh. But even at that, at that stage, we were just um, we were so pumped because as a team, we'd proven that um, we were quite worthy and we'd actually qualified for the quarterfinals. Yes, um, and, and yeah, that's against a lot of expectation. No one really gave us a chance. And um, all, all I was thinking of was just, you know, like just getting out there and, and doing the best that I can for the team. I can honestly say even when I was on four goals, I never thought about the golden boot. Um, it was just all about the team and, and, and us progressing as far as we could go. Um, what happened um, once we got knocked out against um, uh, the West German side, uh, I do remember a guy called Tom Anderson yes. who, used to, who used to write in the paper. And mm -hmm. he, actually, he actually wrote a little article saying um, – Cursus blew the opportunity to win the golden boot because at that stage I was obviously top of the table. But there was still like um, semi finals and finals to yes, play. And so yes. the assumption was that somebody else was going to overhaul me. But, um, you know, the, it's quite ironic, you know. So I was, I remember I was at the, at the grand final watching um, West Germany play Qatar and um, three players in that game could have, um, gone past me. There were four goals scored in that game, but uh, as it turned out, none of them went past me, so uh, I ended up winning the golden boot on, on countback. I think there was three of us that were um, top, so, uh, that e equal top, so when, um, I played the least number of games. So when you say countback, what was the countback? So, How was it worked so out? I played four games, yep. and everybody else had played six. Oh. So, so you... because they scored they scored four, go four goals in six games, I scored four goals in uh, in four games, unbelievable. So they gave me the they gave me the golden boot. Yeah. Right, the crowd in here are screaming and clapping their hands. You can't hear, it, but you'll hear it later on, Mark. He'll, he'll now the thing about on. this is, my God, four goals in four games. Was that like a, a goal every game or what? So basically, I scored one against Argentina, two against Cameroon, one against England, and then we played our fourth game, which was the quarterfinal against West Germany. Yep. And I did I didn't score in that game. We lost one 0 but I actually oh. missed the penalty in that game. Oh. Done to us. That's a long time. We can't say much about that now. But anyway, look, I the situation. I should have put it in the other corner, man. I should have put it in the other who, corner. Do you have any idea who the goalkeeper was? Not Oliver Kahn, was it? <laughs> no. Because you know what? He's, he's a moron, that, that bloke. Anyway, uh, <laughs> the thing is, now, we're going to talk about the golden boot. And I'm going to ask um, Carl, right now, when I mentioned the golden boot to somebody earlier, 
They've been putting up bloody, can you auction it off? What? That ain't going to happen. Is that right? Carlos, uh, the thing is, Carlos, people are saying to me here right now, uh, can he sell it? Oh, I don't think he's going to sell the bloody no, thing. It'll be worth about $10, no. $15 million. Not even worth that much, mate. It's worth more to him than anything else. Is that right, Mark? Absolutely. Uh, you can't put a value on you it, can't, mate. That's, you can't. That, that's a very special um, yeah, prize now, trophy for me. And um, yeah. Before no, I bring Carlos on, I have a question for you. Somebody says, is it insured? Uh, no, it's not insured. Okay. So they're saying auction. No, no auction, I said. No, no auction right now. I said the people right now. <laughs> Carlos, you got some more? Yes, I have a question for Mark. Look, if you could go on a if we were if we were to go on a harbour cruise for f- four hours around <laughs> Sydney. Okay. What, and you can bring three famous past or present sports people. Oh, who I... would you bring? What would you ask them to make you a better person? Oh God. Well, that's what you're on the spot there now. Well, well Mark, I tell you who I bring. Oh. If I'm help, I'll bring David Ricardo, hey. and I'll ask him, "How did you concentrate for three hours at 300 k's an hour?" Because yeah. I played right back for my other 45s, yeah. and I lose the plot every five minutes, and they blame <laughs> me for the goals. So, how did you keep the concentration for three hours at yeah. 300 k's an hour? Jeez. So, he give you the first one, yeah. and then I'll bring. Someone like Roger Federer. Yes. And I ask him, how did you, what's your diet like? You play five hours, you pack yeah. up the next day. What do you, what's the secret, Roger? Yeah. And then, obviously, I have to bring someone like Mourinho or Ferguson to ask him about football. But those are the three people I will bring to ask him <laughs> their secrets to make okay. me a better person. Uh, Carlos, can I just jump in there? You forgot one very important person that we mm, all Ralphie. know of. Me. Uh, Debbie, uh, she was from Dallas. Now, you could have Deb- asked her oh, if Debbie. she had a good... <laughs> Jesus yeah, Christ. well, I wasn't going to go there, but oh, uh, why not? I get your point. Oh. I don't know what you're <laughs> talking about, uh, Carlos. I think Carlos has been cheeky, Harry. Oh, no, well, no, no, my twin brother is cheeky. So <laughs> how would you like to have a face-to-face chat, Mark, if you had... So, Carlos, look, I, look, two names definitely come to mind. Um, the first one is Muhammad Ali. Oh, oh what yes. a man, what a man. And um, Muhammad, my my very simple question to him would be, how the hell did you manage to keep getting back up? Mm. Um, right. The guy was an absolute living legend and a freak. Muhammad. Absolutely. The um, super, we can say black. He was Diego black. Maradona. Oh, I'd, I'd love to have him if I, could, if I could communicate with the guy. Yeah, we'll, um, we'll get you an interpreter. <laughs> mm-hmm. And with Diego would be, how the hell did you manage to build up such a, an ability? I mean, obviously he was a very intelligent soccer player, but um, yeah, just the, the yeah the, the dedication that would have gone into him becoming what he became, oh, and given, from his poor background and everything as well. Mm. Um, so yeah, um, as for a third, uh, really not sure. Um, you could sort of. He could pick anybody out of um, all sorts now, of different Okay, sports. can I ask you, when you were growing up and you were playing number nine, who was your role model that you wanted? Was it Gerd okay. Muller? Who was your famous number nine? That you you just up? nailed it. You just nailed it in one. Gerd yeah, Muller. Gerd Muller. That I actually used to get a bit of a nickname from people. They used to call me Mini Gerd. Ah. Yeah, yeah, De Bomber. Um, I was short and stocky, kind of like a little bit like what he was. Mm-hmm. And um, a lot of people just said, oh, you remind me a lot of Gert Muller. Not that I was anything like the guy. The guy was an absolute Jeez. legend. Unbelievable. Yeah, yes. God, God rest his soul. But, yes. um, yeah, he was he was my um, striking hero for sure. Excellent. Harry. Well, that makes us three. We're going to put the question to Harry. Now, listen, Harry. Me? Who are the three people you want to get back in time with and have a chat with them? Now, give us three names. I've got my three names here. Three names? Yep. Yeah. Who, who are the three people that you would want to have a chat with? Somebody who three can people. inspire you. Yeah, well, we're, we're three people here. Three people? Yes. Is there anyone? Um, what's his name? Who? What are you What are you talking about me saying this bloody crap for, mate? Well, I'm saying, uh, Carlos put the question to Mark there. He said, who are the people you would love to have a chat with and this, that, the other? Have you got three people? On a harbour cruise. I know, you're on a harbour cruise. Right, right, right. You know who would be my favourite? Now, you're on a harbour cruise. Remember that. Cristiano Ronaldo. Ronaldo. Who else have oh, you got there? Cristiano. Anyone else, Cristiano Harry? Ronaldo, my friend. And don't say Debbie. And I've been looking at, uh, what's his name? That bloody, what's his name? Uh, uh, what's his name? Jonathan. No. 
You got me. Get, you ever got me mixed up? You mate. What's that bloke's name again? Donald Trump. Donald. So you'd want to have Donald Trump, yes. Cristiano Ronaldo, and who That's else? That's right. Who else? We need, we need three now. Quickly, we haven't got all bloody night. <laughs> Linda Lovelace. Uh, Linda Lovelace. Yeah. Well, I've got. But now listen, to this guys. Uh, I've got Peter Brock, MJ, and uh, Alar. Uh, well, why not? I mean, I can ask him questions. Uh, all sorts of questions. Oh, my God, Mark. Well, I've got motor racing, hope, I've Mark... got uh, the music industry, and I've got religion. Well, what's wrong with that, uh, Harry? I hope, Mark, you're not, you're not going to put a straightjacket on tonight after what you've heard here. Well, you know I mean? <laughs> MJ. Did, now, I bet now, you Carlos doesn't know who MJ is. Now, Carlos, who is MJ? Who's M Michael Jordan. Shut up. Yeah, Michael Jordan. I'm getting a massive No, yes, Michael he, Jackson. He is on par. With Muhammad Ali, yes, for achieving so many things and being such an amazing athlete, who yeah. you know, uh, Ali was in a generation where he fought prejudice and overcome all the barriers yeah. to become the best. And Michael Jordan, in many ways, he became the very best amongst a lot of obstacles. So, I think Michael Jordan and Muhammad oh, Ali one more. are two giants of sports person who have overcome so many obstacles and we actually could learn from them a bit of humility which we are lacking today many of the youngsters you, you know? can say exactly, so that's exactly. A topic for absolutely. another another day absolutely mark we're going to let you go i know that you got you got some work to go to and uh you're starting about nine o'clock is that right yeah, I do night shift, guys. So, um, yeah, thanks Ooh, for having me on. Well, Mate, fantastic, Kevin. We tried to get you on for a long time. We finally got you on. We got it because they've changed our times. We've got this curfew in Melbourne, and uh, we've all become uh, locked up down here. So uh, yes, we're sorry. Yes. We've got you at the right time. How's that, Mark? i tell you what, Mark. It's all good. Thanks. Th thanks very much, guys. Thank you for joining us, Mark. Thank and you, Mark. Uh, Carlos, hold on there. Thanks, Mark, guys. That was Mark yep. Kusis, 1981. <laughs> 1981. 1981. Thank you, Mark, for joining us. Thank he you. He won the Golden Tooth Award. That's fair enough. That's right. Thanks, Mark, for joining us now. It. Someone's got the Golden go. Tooth. Thank you. Now, Carlos, are you hanging on for us? Yeah, I'm still here. Now, what I want to talk about is you. We need to talk about these. Um, the only games that we got happening in 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 this in this country. We don't have any games happening in our states at the moment. No, because well, right we now don't. today we had the confirmation that the NPL Victoria have cancelled the season. Oh. Uh, I love this. I, I really love this. Oh. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Unbelievable. We've cancelled yeah, but... all of that season, Carlos. Oh, all, same as you guys, Carlos. All that season that we started, the pre-season training and everything like this, and not only is it we're talking about, we're talking every sport that was getting ready to play finals in Victoria, that was the problem. Just before finals, they pulled the pin Carlos, it doesn't look very good for, for kids who are, who are, you know, no. trying to develop themselves in any kind of sport right now. But what do we do? We have to start again, Carlos, next year. What do you think of that? We have to start again. But it also brings into question, Harry and Frothy, yes. the start of the A-League yes. during the second week in October. Mm. I cannot see the A-League kicking off with Mark McGowan and Amanda Palaszczuk yes. being such difficult people. So at the moment, I'm not surprised that the NPL in Victoria has been canned, but let's look realistically. How can the A-League commence in during the second week in October? Because mm. the Socceroos have another FIFA window in the first 10 days in October. Yes. Right? So the A-League has aligned itself with the rest of the world where there is no football being played during the FIFA window. Yes. Now, second week in October, we're meant to start playing home and away. Yep, that's right. I cannot see that happening. And the issue becomes also Wellington. Yes. Wellington is in lockdown. Do, oh. do we fly them here, quarantine for 14 days, and the professional, the APL, puts the bill for Wellington like last year? Oh. So I can't see the A-League kicking off on a home and away basis like in October, in, we might have to go into a bubble. Well, so there's a lot of issues are around this lockdown and yes. the, the Premier's going on a tangent saying we're not going to open when we get to 70 because children under 12 are going to die. And McGowan says we don't want the eastern states giving us COVID. We're going to mm. shut the border. So what's going to happen to the A-League? Well, what uh, I see in the A-League is that they're going to have to push it to winter. Didn't they say winter last year? Now, they're going well, to have to push uh, it for a reason to winter. Simple as that. Well, I, I mean, the A-League, the new calendar was meant to have basically 
12 months of football. Mm. So the A-League will start in October and then finish around May, June. Yes. It would also allow transfer between um, MPO clubs to A-League clubs and vice versa during yes. the season. And we'll have two transfer windows. So we meant to have this, you know, synchronised calendar yes. between A-League, which is a Premier League, and then we move towards the winter month and we yes. cohabit with the winter coat, NPL. But at the moment, uh, we have one and one trainer in Sydney. We can't have more than... So you have Sydney FC and no doubt doing one and one drills because yes. we can't have a group. That's right. And we have And we have to give... We have to praise Sydney FC for allowing and we give Melbourne Victory a Raspberry Award because Melbourne, Sydney FC allowed Ryan Grant to travel with the Socceroos and to train overseas for the next four weeks. So he will be there for the next round of qualifiers. Yep. Greece Economides was chosen. Yes. But Melbourne said, no, you come back to us son, for two weeks and get locked up for two weeks and then go no, off again. No. That's so ridiculous. we have to give praise to Sydney FC. No doubt That's that right. Graham Arnold has a good relationship with Corica. And then he will be training on his own under supervision. So when he returns from the October qualifiers, yep. Yep. he is a better player yes. because he was given the chance to play for his country. Economides wasn't. He'd be grumpy unhappy so melbourne victory and popovich i'm sorry you are wrong on this one mm. you should have allowed the young man to travel with the socceroos to become a better player at the end of the day well the situation is what you're saying there too is situation Ma the situation is mclaren was mclaren and who was the other guy that was saying that why why, why aren't they there that was well, McLaren, okay, McLaren just got married. Yes. So he chose not to go because he was going on. He, he couldn't go on his honeymoon before because grand funder and COVID, he just got married. Matthew Leckie yes. uh, had just signed from Melbourne. His German woman, he is married to a beautiful German lady with two young children, Ooh. two Ooh. and three. Ooh. They've just resettled Ooh. in Melbourne. Yes. And Matthew Leckie, who was the captain of the Socceroos, gave up the chance to be in the soccer squad, to be with his family, because he said, I cannot afford to be six weeks away from my wife, who is just new to Melbourne, because he will go to Doha, and if he went, he will go to Doha, Vietnam, yes. come back on Thursday, be locked away for two weeks, no. train for a week and a bit, and then back to Doha and Japan, and then locked away be in uh, quarantine for two weeks. So Matthew Leckie uh, paid the ultimate price for his family. Yes. Say, my family has to come first. Exactly. And Graham Arnold said, I'm very, to his credit, he said, I want the players to have their family behind them. So he understands what Matthew Leckie chose not to travel. Matthew Langerak was another player who said, yes. I cannot do the quarantine. I have two young children. I need to be with them. And if you remember, it's like the great man, his father Ibrahimovic. After about ten, five years in exile, he went back to the national team for the last Euros. Remember that? Yes, I do. And he then did. I'll never forget his interview when he says, my children are crying yes. that I'm going away for two weeks. They don't see me. I find yes. it very hard to cope. So... It is a tough one. Being a footballer it has its perks, yes. but it's very hard on the family. And that's something we never pay attention to, the gotcha. sacrifices that the family members have to make yes. for you to be at the very top of your game. That's right. Now, Carlos, I want to say is that we're just very lucky that Aaron Moy played last night or this morning and Tommy Rogic is back in the, in the uh, Socceroos as well which you know, explains Matthew Leckie. At least they've got some players who've come back that have been experienced in the... And, and, and what do you think of the game? What do you think of the game last night? There's a couple of games that you saw. I think you saw the O-Man and the Japan game. Oh, what man. was the score yes, there? Yes, I did. How was that game? Well, O-Man will be a difficult opponent to play against. Yes. They play the perfect game. They parked the bus when they had to park the bus. And they attacked really well and were dangerous throughout. Yep. The Amani goalkeeper made four crucial saves 
that you went, how did he do that? But then on the day, they scored, they scored. Japan has to, again, and China was, I mean, the Socceroos did well. Uh, Rohit controlled the midfield. Erdvine was the energizer bunny running and tackling and passing. They all play well, considering we had two training sessions. Yes. But China was extremely poor. And I find it difficult to believe that a country like China, which is the largest and the most, the biggest country in the world, we can they cannot find 18 decent players to play for the national team. Yep. Because if you're going to lose, lose with pride. China was very poor. The Socceroos did well. Mabil did brilliant. Rohic controlled the midfield and stamped his authority in the midfield with precision passing. Doyle was amazing. Oh. Doyle was amazing as well. What? And everyone did their job. Now, Carlos, Tuesday, the, yes. Before you mentioned Boyle, I've been saying this and it's right here in front of me. As you said his name, Boyle always go for, he goes for it and attacks. He's the only one that comes in attacks like the European players do. But just remember this. He's been playing in Scotland for so long that he's playing the European type of, type of game. He <coughs> takes the players on. Did you see that scorey goal? That goal he scored? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah he takes right. the that's players right. on. We don't have anyone. We're lucky that we have him to score that goal. You see how he takes the players on? He goes in. He goes in. Well, I mean, Anawa Mabil, Anawa Mabil. Yeah, Iwa Mabil. Has has actually improved as a player since he left Adelaide City. He's another player who's the X factor. He runs, he cuts in, he dribbles, he shoots from everywhere. So this is what playing at the highest level does to you. Exactly. And obviously in the Scottish Premier League, you don't have much time on the ball. You have to do the best of what you have of your little chances. And I watched the derby between Celtic and Rangers last Sunday. It was an amazing mm. derby. I think Angelo Postacoglu will shake up Scottish football because they, they it's it's an amazing uh, style of play. They're high pressing, non-stop yes. passing. But, you know, the soccer is the biggest, big test. We know Saudi Arabia won at home as she should yes. win at home against Vietnam 3-1 and they came back from 1-0 down. Jesus. We won on man one away. So we are if we are on top of the table because goal of the difference. plus three goal difference. Goal difference, yes. Now Vietnam different different kettle of fish, eighty five percent degree humidity, yes. thirty five, thirty eight degree plus, but remember, empty stadium. So this hostile crowd will not be there and that will actually work in favor of the soccer exactly race. yes if we, if we could pinch a point yes we're doing really well we and are. then the other crucial game obviously japan away to china yes J japan should win this one but they china should. will be playing at home and obviously be hurting after capitulating to the soccer race. they will have people On carlos Mars, they will have people there at the ground. I think they will in China. They've opened up nearly everything, haven't they? Yeah, and then we have Oman, Saudi Arabia. Oh, boy. You know, both teams um, won. Both teams are very capable of yes. producing an upset. And I think this this game, this group, it is the group of death because Oman has shown they could actually come and play away from home, not just park the bus, but when they move forward, yes. they were dangerous. And... Um, you know, uh, Vietnam is actually, Vietnam is doing really well in the youth ranks. They led Saudi Arabia 1-0 at half time, and then we don't know what happened in Riyadh. Yes. And I think it's an exciting game, and it's a shame that we can't see the Socceroos at home. I know, it's ridiculous. Because if we were at home, Bank West, Melbourne, even at, um, you know, you know three-quarters capacity, that Grand Amy Park Band West will be rocking exactly. because we are hungry. We are desperate to see the heroes at of home, course. and we haven't seen them for two years. Now, Carlos, we have someone here in Vietnam has just contacted us. Do you believe this? He's on the site right now. I he's, believe he's staying, Mister. It's always Mister Holiday. Oh, well, Stephen Holiday's always on a holiday in Vietnam. Now he's he's in the Vietnam right now, and this is what he says about what's going on. Vietnam may have some people in the crowd. If the game is is in Hanoi, that's what he says. That's let's see what happens from there. Come on, Frothy, what do you think of this? Now, come on, now listen. 
This is up for debate. First of all, I've got three oh. things. I've got three things I must say. Now, I tip... There you go, Harry. I'll, I'll put it up there. <laughs> I tip China to beat the Socceroos 2-0. Two nil. Two I was nil. wrong. Okay, you were wrong, yes. Yes. I was wrong. I was wrong. Uh, but now, listen, Carlos, listen. Uh, let's be honest here. Let's be honest. Um... They played China, uh, and now you said it yourself, the Chinese, we love the Chinese, we love the Chinese rice as well. Oh. Had, you had some Chinese oh. rice there, didn't you? Yeah. You had the uh, you know special fried rice. No, 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 I had the, uh, what's it called, uh, basmati. The, the basmati. Uh, basmati. Now listen, uh, look, of course, we've got to give credit to the Socceroos, because look, they rocked up, they won a football match, I better not say soccer. Yes. But look, guys, I mean, seriously, now let, 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 let's get serious here. They beat China. I mean, it's no big achievement, really, on the world but stage. But there's three points in the bag. That's what it is. Yes, the there point. is three China, points. I, three I, points in the bag. And I forward. said it. I said it. They rocked up. I give them credit. But we shouldn't get excited. They're only beating these little teams here. And you did say, Carlos, Vietnam. Now, I tell you what. If the Socceroos can't smash Vietnam, I don't care whether, whether they're playing in your backyard or in Harry's backyard we couldn't. or on another planet... Um, I give him no chance. Uh, look, if we want to get to a World Cup and actually do something, these teams in our group, guys, now, come on. Are you for We're real? We're getting excited for nothing. I mean, look. Uh, uh, are you for real? Well, I am for I real. I will tell you Your why for real. Your position is nothing. I they will... are nothing. Carlos, this is what I tell you right now. All right, well, tell us right now. Now you'll know what I'm talking about. Okay, Remember that World Cup qualifier over four years ago? Four years ago in Thailand that we needed to win by so many goals to qualify. Remember that one? We couldn't yes, score the goals. Yes, when yes. Ange Postacoglu was there, we could not well, get those goals. Well, why couldn't so we score the goals, Harry? Be da- and they can be danger teams. No, danger teams. No, 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 no. No, that's not a danger team. If we can't score a goal against Thailand, and we want to claim well, that we're I, going to be some world beaters, disgrace. No, I'm sorry, I fellas. Remember, Carlos, no, I don't I, agree. I remember being at a Thailand game because my son had just turned 21. Ooh. And we treated ourselves to an away trip. Yes. And being at the ground where we drew two all, and I thought a lot of the Socceroos thought it was the game was in the bag before it started mm. and we disrespected Thailand and we paid the penalty. And that was the beginning of the end, which led to the playoffs. The other one was a two loss, two zero nil, two zero loss to Japan away that condemned us to the playoff. But we we should never disrespect the Minos. It is 11 mm. against 11, and they will die for their country. It would only take one decision penalty, like there was a VAR overturned decision, Japan, a man penalty against Japan. The referee looked at the screen. It wasn't a penalty, but it's only one decision, one penalty. And we will dis- well, decide Carlos, again. We should never I, disrespect the Minos. I agree. They will rise to the occasion. I agree, but we shouldn't just rely on one VAR going wrong. We still got the other Here eighty-nine and a half minutes to show the world oh, that we are better than the Asian teams, and we're not. Apart from one team that we will always be struggling to beat is Japan. The rest of them, we oh. should ease past them. And if we don't, if it goes well, to penalties so or this be- and that. It's a failure again. Saudi Arabia has always been a very difficult to play against historically. And Oman will be another difficult opponent as well because they actually could play. But anyway, it is the World Cup. It is, yes. It is 11 against 11. You should win at home or be at Doha and then away, pick up a point. And if you lose, do not lose for more than one goal. That's right. Because at the end of the day, the four and against... Uh, goal difference will come to haunt you. That's so right. win at home, pick up half the points away, and you're through to Qatar 2022. That's right. Now, can I add to that, please, Sunday? Can I add to that? Yes. Now, uh, Bessart, Barisha, or John Markovsky. I'm doing a comparison. Oh, now, come good. on. Now, come on, and be honest. Now, you remember big John Markovsky? He was a controversial young fellow there. Nice yeah. fellow. Like, played for every team in the, in he the NSL. He played for every team in the NSL. Jesus. And um, the money was there. He well, was... I have to see John Markovsky. God, he had an amazing left foot. Oh, yes. He did. And I remember being at the uh, ES Marksfield, and he was playing, I think, for Preston Macedonia. Yes, at that time in Sydney FC. Yes. And he takes, he puts the ball down, and... Did just the balls go to the and Todd Clark, who was the 
ginger head, gold, ginger mix, goalkeeper yes. for Sydney. Never saw it. So John Markowski, because of his ability Ooh. from from dead ball situations, yes. Berisha is a goal poacher. That's right. Markowski was well, the okay. master of the free kick. A technician. Or the long range say. shooting. Now, technician. Now, Carlos, if you were to start your team, Bialy FC in the A-League, and you had two players to choose, you got one or the other, would you take Bessard over Markovsky? That's your first signing. You can only have one. Now, I will surely... take Markovsky, you and joking? I put him on a strict diet to lose well, some kilos. I, mean, I, tell you what, I reckon run Carlos has had a few reds tonight. Right. Um, now, you're having a okay. few reds, I suppose, but, uh, well, look, we're all entitled to our Yes, opinion. yes, yes. I would take the Albanian salesman first, oh. Harry. Ooh, is that oh. it? Now, Carlos, thank you for joining us tonight. Carlos, it was a pleasure. We had a great debate tonight. Carlos, well, Monday well, night, we, we have to see you Monday night. We've got a special guest Monday night as well. Next, George Katsakis is on. Sure. I'm in lockdown. I'm ready. Yes, we're going to gonna get Carlos on Monday. Guys, we've got... okay. Can I just say one more thing quickly, Carlos? Uh, now, I've got my prediction wrong. I tipped China to beat the Aussies 2-0. Uh, the next game, I've gone for Japan 1, Socceroos 0. Now, quickly, do you think I'm right? No. Well, away from home in Saitama... Next October, when the Socceroos are away to Japan, difficult. But if we pick up a point yes. against Vietnam and Japan will, will struggle against, probably draw against China, in China, we are we could actually pinch another point in Japan yes. and looking very comfortable towards the second phase well, of the qualifiers. Yeah. But very, is, very well put. Um, football is a strange game. You... It is. Yep. Uh, Carlos has gone, disappeared. What? He just left us He's disappeared. I better he get must on. Have fallen off the I better, chair I better get him on before we. Uh, we got to say goodbye to him anyway. We'll get. We'll get him on. Hang on well, for a sec. Is it true he has a few reds at home? I don't know what happened. He might have pressed the wrong night. button or something. Let's get Carlos to, a, to say good night to half a bottle of Chardonnay. Is that? Is that what they? Is, it, is that the red wine? Carlos, Chardonnay. yeah. We got cut off, but anyway, we. We're going to get you on next on Monday night. We've got George, George Katsakis. Yes, we're going Heidelberg, back to Monday night. Heidelberg United on Monday night at 7 p.m. Yes, Are you with us? We're Are you back with on us? Monday night. Yeah, Are you yeah with absolutely. Count me in. This count is going to be very sure. a very special we show on the history of Heidelberg Fitzroy George. United. Plus, we talked to him about his club, his team in the second division. And we're going to give more of the Ooh. hard questions on what sort of players is he looking for for the second division team. How's that? Well, it'll be oh, fantastic. Absolutely. Well, well, I'm happy. I'm past the due use by day, but I'm happy to, um, <laughs> to be a scout, okay? All right, Carlos. Buenas, bu buenas noches, senor. Okay, buenas noches, good night, senor. Everyone. Good night, everyone. Thank you, guys. Now, what guys, was that you just said? Was that a good night or a get lost? Buenas noches means good night, my friend. I, okay, fair enough. Now, we're going to bring on Mr. NPL. We have Mr. a problem. NPL. Guys, we've got a massive shit situation. A shit situation again. A situation. A shit situation about what the hell is going on. Uh, not 9 p.m., 7 p.m. Uh, we're talking 7 p.m. Yes. Monday night, Gavin. Uh, so we're NPL. back Monday nights now. It's official. 7, 7 p.m. Can you announce that? Ma we're back Monday nights at 7 p.m. We're back this week with George Katsakis. We ha really want to do something bad to some people in this in this state, but we can't talk about the Ooh, politics. Well, we no, want to talk no, to Gavin, no. and the, situ the situation has just got worse. And we want to fix this mess up. If we can fix it, we are the supermen of the game. The soccer psychos. Well, I tell Bloody you what, hell, now, mate. Now Gav would be very, very disappointed. Oh, we're all upset. He would be very disappointed his team, Arsenal, because Arsenal, I've got a statistic here. Let me Arsenal get him on. have failed to score in their first three matches since 1953-1954. Now, how bad is Arsenal going? I don't want to talk about them. Well, I tell you what. They're bad. Uh, listen, uh, Gavin Fisher, <laughs> I, I doubt he would answer the phone because Second he time is in gonna... tears. Yeah. Because the Arsenal fans, have you seen what's happened on Facebook, Harry? Yeah, Do you know what Facebook is? Is the guy's name Arteta? Well, that's the one. There's a lot of fans that are going crazy in England. Yeah, they're going to write, they are write posting the streets, these one-minute videos. Absolutely. Given the Arsenal soccer club. Sorry, football club. Or Threatening. Soccer. Uh, they are going crazy over there in England. Uh, Threatening, are they? hooligans are back. Let's bring uh, him on, guys. Mr. Well, NPL. Let's see Mr. NPL. Let's do it, guys. Well, yeah, We're yeah. going to call him a second time. Yeah, you watch this crap again. Time. Every well, time this happens to us, guys, yes, you it's something to do, to do with his bloody phone. Is it a red carpet or He's something? He's got the red carpet. Bloody hell. <laughs> Always it happens to us with this bloke. I don't know what it is, guys. The cup of life. This is... Oh, we... oh gee, a bloody phone, mate. Are we finished or we're still on? What's going on, what do you mean? 
Here comes his sister. Hi, the person hey, you have called is not your sister. His sister again did it to me again. He's, I'll uh, tell you what, this young fella, he's <laughs> got a bite. Are you there, Mr. Hey, 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 how are you, man? You need to buy, you need to get a new service provider, I think, Gavin. <laughs> uh, I understand, mate. Fair enough. Now, now, now. I understand. How are we? I am, <laughs> I am, I am young I'm going gonna to swim. I don't want to swim my guts yet. No. The viewers out there, because I'll tell you what, mate. You can't swim. They have you destroyed. cannot say the word fuck. Oh, sorry, man. Excuse me. They All have the destroyed word. every sport, no matter whether it's our football yes. or soccer, yes. whatever it is. They have destroyed every sport in this state, including New South Wales sports. It is disgusting. They should have just played on and not put people in the bloody grounds. Gavin, we're upset. What are we going to do now? What about these memberships people have played, well, Gavin? The memberships you have paid, Gavin. What happens then? Uh, Gav, before, oh, no, before you jump in you there... Uh, Probably going on. Good, buddy. Good. Now, uh, Harry's just, in other words, just trying to say, if you were the Premier of the great uh, Victorian no. state here, <laughs> what, what would you do? Now, dic- now dic- give us a two-minute dic- rundown. The dictator, yeah. Oh, uh, mate, what would I do, mate? Well, you know what I would have done? Mm. I would have put everybody available copper on the New South Wales border and would have stopped everyone coming here yeah. two months ago. Yeah. Well, That's what I would have done. Yeah. Right. But yeah. Number now one. it's just too Number late. Two. It's too late now, so not much we can do, is there, really? <laughs> just laugh at them. Laugh at all of them. Oh, there's a lot of things we can do, I suppose. Can't even bloody cry, mate. Oh, oh, it's what, it's what, bad. What? I hate it. It's, oh, you know, but what can we do? You know, it's just what it is, mate. It's, we need, a, we need a, a football revolution. Yes, yes. A, a, a football revolution, mate. Well, what's happening in, in, in football in this state, well, Gavin? Um, did you hear about um, NPL Victoria? It's been called off. The season's yes. been called we're off. Up, we're well, upset. to no one's surprise, all, I suppose. All levels, right through juniors, yes. seniors, all levels, finished for the year, mate. Done. Oh, God. All over. Oh, God. Yep, another year, mate. Done. And dusted. No champions, oh. no relegation, no promotion. Ridiculous, mate. Finished Ridiculous. all over. And FFA Cup will be finished for us, too, in, as in Victoria, it's anyway. Done. It's done. Uh, you know what I mean? So I don't know how that competition can go on if Victoria can't can, can dis- t- t- be involved. You know, you know what, what I mean? Like, you know, I know what um, what but they never mentioned that in the in the in the statement they released the well, FFV. They never mentioned anything about the FFA Cup oh, yeah. and what's going to happen with the four representatives oh, yeah, from mate. Victoria. Never okay. said a word. I got mug, bloody. Shoot him, I'm going to get full of the mug. Sorry, Boris Gav, is uh, playing up again. Boris, uh, uh, Gavin, Horace's brother uh, just flown past. I have a solution. I have a solution to the What's game. What's that? My solution is this. Here we go. Gavin? Clean how, out your ears. How far is Antarctica to, to Tasmania? Oh, about 20 k's, I suppose, isn't it? About <laughs> 20 k's. How far it's is good, Antarctica mate. to Tasmania? We go and go to Antarctica, we mate. We can, mark the, we can mark. mark the bloody grounds in Antarctica. We can play the games there in the coldest weather in the bloody world. Well, no right. one can get sick. They can get sick as much as I like to get the cold, whatever. That's but we right. can play the game there with the orange footballs. Remember the orange footballs in England? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Get yes. the orange footballs yeah, back out there, so mate. Like heavy. Right there. Bloody hell. Oh, mate, in the snow, mate. They look just like so heavy and they look so awkward. Mate, it's honestly. Like going back 80 years to those real heavy bloody footballs yeah. they used back in the 20s and 30s, mate. They, you know they, what I mean? Did, like, they call them, did they call them snowballs? <laughs> that was a beauty one. Yeah, that's what they remind me of, those orange balls. Balls that the players use in the 20s and 30s. And yes. They, they get full of water and they get even more heavier. Oh, yeah. And even more harder. You know what I mean? Like, you that's, what, that's what they remind me of, those orange balls. You like, want, you, I say, orange you want, balls get harder. Now, what's he on about? What's he talking about here? These, just these got the le- end they were originally made of leather, these balls, if you remember. Leather. So leather balls yes, to get right, harder. Right. I don't know what he's on and about. And if you, and if, and if, and if you've got <laughs> no, no, and if, and if you got hard balls, mate, you're like a hard balls, don't you, Oh, jeez. And and, and uh, if you if you got to if you got to get get a header from that ball that's full of water, you're get gone, a mate. From the well, you get bloody knocked right. out big time. Oh, it's right, Now, Gavin, that- Gavin, we have a very big guest on uh, Monday night Ooh. on our show. I heard, George Katsakis comes on. We're going to give George the yes. hardest words, the hardest questions. We're going to beat him up and say, George, we're going to talk to you about the second division. What are we going to do? Your team, your first team, three months out or four months out from the second division and say, what are you going to do? Are you going to use overseas players? Are you going to bring players in from overseas? Are you going to use some juniors? Are you going to use players who are in the NPL? That is a very important question that we must ask about the second division. That's enough, big. Yeah. That is big. Well, can yeah, I no, answer that enough. question? Here we go it's again. There's so, been a bit of thing talk about the second division and stuff. It's but, happening, mate. Know, it's coming. Well, I hope it does, mate. I really do. It and is I'll, happening. I'll, I'll believe it when it actually happens. And at the moment, talk's pretty cheap. And everyone likes talking about it and stuff, which is great. But um, I just wait until it actually happens because... Yeah. 
Um, there are more to come. Yeah, you know, it's like it'll be massive, mate. And I don't want to get too excited. Look, Gavin, and then and then it doesn't happen and falls over, and then we're just stuck where we are again, no, mate. You no, know what I mean? I, like, I, before Frothy comes on, this is what this is what I want to say. This is what I want to say to okay, everyone out there who yep, supports an no. NPL club who's going to be in the second division. Okay. We've had a gutful. Yes, we've had a gutful really? of going to cow paddock grounds. Yep. Cowboy we've had a cap, uh, we've had a gut full of that sort of stuff where we go and pay a membership, even though we play away games. You go and sit the away games. Go you can't even games. sit down at grounds, Gavin. You, you have a you have a gut full of this. So we're going to travel interstate to Adelaide and play West Adelaide, Adelaide or, West or Adelaide, 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 Adelaide City. Adelaide we're going to be in a stadium, mate, we're to, to stadium. sit down and watch a game. You know, watch the game. Stop exactly. And have a chance to play at top level as well, mate. That's right. Like everyone else does around the world. So we don't want to we don't want to go in these cow paddock stadiums. You know, this is what I don't like anymore. You know. Have a chance yeah. to play at the top level like everybody else around the world. That's mate. right. Like everybody yeah. else does. Frothy, get on with it. Well, fellas, look, Frothies. let's be serious here, okay? Now, now let, let, let's try and be serious here. Uh, the way this virus is going, now, we don't know when the game's going to open up. Now, by the time it opens up, all those people who were, were possibly thinking about going to support a second division and go there... They're going to lose so much interest. So I say oh, this. We go. Oh, I, don't, I don't know about that. More, uh, I, more, have more interest, I reckon. Possibly more keen to go. Nah, they've they, been stuck at home forever and they want to get out and experience nah. things, mate. Do things. Get back to normal life. Exactly, it's mate. Going, it is going to fail because when the Fury, when Gold Coast oh, and all these uh, teams... Oh, come on, Profies. Come on. Nah, you can't, it, it, you can't, you can't compare us to the Gold Coast or North Queensland Fury, mate. Come on, please. Well, listen, uh, I did predict that these three teams won't survive and they didn't. Exactly. Uh, well, I tell you why exactly, Gav. Uh, oh, actually, Gav, did you hear the uh, did you hear the news? Arsenal failed to score in a first. Oh, mate. Why do you I bring this you, up for the I heard you the intro about Arsenal, mate. It's, Jesus. Yeah, you know you've been. Oh, we talked about this the other day on the phone and stuff, and you've yes. probably read some of the stuff I've been writing on yes. Facebook about well, gentlemen, what's been going on at Arsenal I have, and stuff. I have a and request. It's a horror show, mate. It is a dead set horror show. We have a request. Well, it's just like hard to take. Show it to me. Um, I've been watching. I've been watching Celtic sure, more. Sure. I've been taking more interest in what's going on in Celtic instead, mate, now, and watching Ange instead, now, mate. So we have. It's just half well, of a horror Gavin, show, mate. It's like Sam. Gavin, stop it's for a sec. horror show. Hold on, Harry would have stopped we to have, the show. Just we hold have, on. We have a request here, Gavin. Sorry about that, yes. Gavin. We've got to interrupt here. Stephen Holiday always on holidays. He's always on holidays. Harry, will you be wearing the Burgers shirt on Monday? Not the Burgers shirt. The Fitzroy. <laughs> the Fitzroy United shirt. The Fitzroy United shit has been worn. Now, who's talking? Gonna... Who's that? Stephen Holiday, is it? Yeah, from Holidays, yeah. Now, Stephen Holiday, I know you're listening. There is more chance of Harry becoming a male stripper than the second division going in Australia. Now, I'll tell you what, that is coming. <laughs> that is a, a fact because you'll see, first of all, it's all talk. There's no action. Mm. They keep on saying second division, <laughs> second division, second division. Load of crap. It won't happen. And when it does happen, <laughs> it's going to fail. It's civil. Gavin, Gavin do you have any... Right. Oh, I'm you're half that, Gavin, I you're am... You're half right, mate. Gavin, you're half right. Gavin, Gavin, I am Gavin, 80, right. I'm 82 and a half percent right because if they don't go to the A-League, they're not going to go into these shitty cow paddocks, Harry. Ga Gavin, do you... What do you the reckon, Gavin? The company you work for, do they have uh, straight jackets at all? <laughs> mate, they should get some, mate. They're sitting Thank around you. a joint, mate. The lockdown, he's taking it out of the lockdown, no, Proffies. They can get angry, mate. The lockdown, angry. No. the lockdown is about to end very shortly. I'll I, tell you what, mate. I'm going gonna, 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 to end it myself. I've got ideas, mate. Well, sorry, Gav. I'm very happy because my team, the great <laughs> Brisbane Raw. I love John Saz. What did you yes. say about me? I don't know if you know, uh, Gav, uh, Brisbane Raw. What's that, what's that with Brisbane? Uh, now, guess what? They were 13. They put 13 goals parked. Past a wide bay select team. Oh, now God. I don't care <laughs> yep. though. I don't care if this team wide were bay, mate. Wide, wide bay, bay select. I, I, I know who they well, are. They're, they're top class wide bay, mate. Well, well, they're look, they're uh, like. listen, it doesn't matter who they played, whether they were sixty-five year old blokes and weighing Queensland. at four hundred and twenty kilos. Uh, it's quite an effort. But what is most disappointing, uh, Gav? They actually mm. conceded a goal. Do you believe it? <laughs> well, thirty-one no. was it? Thirty-one. <laughs> We've had enough, mate. Fair enough. Good, good effort by Ryan Bay, mate, to get on the score sheet. One, one, one thing I will tell you about Queensland NPL. Yes. They've got stadiums. Mate. They've got nothing here, mate. They've got stadiums yes, in Queensland. Every time you see Richard Roy, he's always in a stadium, mate. Richland's well, at Richland's, man. Jesus. And let me just say one other thing, fellas, before we go tonight. Uh, Ronaldo. Mm. Uh, now, do you know what I'm about to say about Ronaldo? There's yes. some big news about Ronaldo. Yes, he's coming. Crit what do you mean he's coming? He's flying, he's flying over no, the, no. the plane. He has, uh, <laughs> now, now, Gab might know this. He has broken the record for the most goals in international matches. Beautiful. 
Now, does he claim the best ever player? Okay. I think he's breaking Pe- 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 well, Pele's, mate, Pele's record, I think, uh, isn't it? Well, I don't know. Like, um, I, we haven't talked about this really, but um, like Messi going to PSG, right? Yes. Um, yes. Uh, and then Ronaldo yeah. going to United. Ronaldo going to the Premier League and Messi going to France. Who's um, who's got the bigger challenge, mate? Who's who's taking on the bigger challenge? Who's going for not just the Champions League, but trying to win the best league in the world? You know Ronaldo. what I mean? Trying to be champion in the Ronaldo. best league. Ronaldo. Ronaldo. And I, I respect him for that. I've got massive respect exactly, for that. Exactly. Where Messi's gone the, the softer option, gone yeah. to France. You know what I mean? Like, And PSG going to win the league easy in France. Stupid it is. But, Ronaldo, he's gone the hard. He's gone the toughest option possible, mate, to try That's and right. win the Premier League and the Champions League for United. And respect to well, him for that, exactly. honestly. Well, let's he's not gone forget. massive. Exactly. Right. Messi could have went anywhere in the Premier League, anywhere in the world, but he went to PSG for some reason. I don't know why. You know what I mean? Well, like, well obviously, it's, uh, it's all the – well, it, it's got to be money. And, and let's not forget, he didn't want to leave uh, Barcelona, did he? Mm, no, it well, wasn't you his know, he left because of the money. Money, mate. he couldn't get paid. Well, they couldn't pay him. Well, it's simple. If Melbourne victory offered uh, Cristiano oh, Ronaldo, yes. whatever, he would have come over to this shit team. Actually, I've still got the. Uh, here we go. Oh no, no, no! Please don't. Melbourne not, victory. We're not, we're, not about, we're not talking about. We're not talking about. We're not talking about this Selfies. stuff tonight. No, no. I was hoping Messi come to Celtic, mate. He loves Celtic. He said many times. Celtic. He loves Celtic. Oh. Loves Parkhead. Loves the fans. I should have been there. Best atmosphere. One of the best atmospheres in the world. Ange come to Celtic, mate. Instead of PSG, mate. Ange, no much difference. Ange would have been very happy with that. Hey, oh, Ange would have made. Ange would have made him even better player, mate. Right. <laughs> and Gav, seriously, can you imagine a player like that at Celtic? He would definitely score. He's got he's got hundred goals in a season, mate. He would score at least two goals per game, Hat two tricks. and over. Hat tricks. I mean, let's face it, Gentlemen, the Scottish teams are no better than the A League Ga- teams. Gavin, Ga- Ga- Gavin, are. Gavin, will you join us on Monday night? Well, why? Yeah, well, yeah, I've got a couple of things I like to talk to you about, like Celtic and exactly. about the yeah. um, about Socceroos, mate. Great win. Yes. Um, yeah, Monday night you know, we're, get, um, we're, gonna, we're getting back on track on Monday night at seven PM, guys. Yeah, so and, um, that's obviously what's happening. Carlos talking about the national team, and yes. I agree with a lot of things he said. Was he mentioned the uh, he made some good points and stuff. So yeah, no, I agree. National team was great today. It was very good, fantastic very good. performance. And let's get a bit and win that. And we've got two wins from two, and we're on the way, mate. That's right, exactly. Thank you, Gavin, for joining us. We'll see well, you Monday night. We're off, know. boys. Well, guys, well, I'll see you on Monday. Yeah, hopefully we're, I'll be. We're right, boys. See you, Gavin. Thank you, Vietnam. Gavin. Vietnam. Now you and I Pretty can guys. beat Vietnam. Thank, thank, you, Gavin. thank you for joining us. I mean, who is Vietnam? Don't forget, Monday night, guys. George Katsakis is here with us. George Katsakis. From Heidelberg United, the championship coach. He'll be talking about the second division and what sort of team he'll have and what sort of players he'll have in there. We're going to give him the hard, the hard questions on this. She bangs. Thanks for joining us, guys, tonight. See you Monday night at 7 p.m. The new time back to Monday nights at 7 p.m. Hup, hup, check it out. Let's hup, get it. loud. Hup. Let's get loud. Hear the man. Hup. Turn the music. I've got the wrong song. The cup of life. Now, this Carlos. is the one. Now, I tell now you is what. it done? I tell you what. Don't never stop. Well, we I shouldn't know. Put on the Gotta be strong. Well, we shouldn't know. Right say. from the top. And when you, you feel the heat, the world is at your feet. But look, no one can hold you back if you really want it. I see it in your eyes. England. You want the guts of life. Put it against Not the days here. You're going gonna get it. Like I've said Do you before, really want it? Do you really? Are you my get out of me, mate? Here we go. Ali, Ali, Ali. Go, go, go. go, go. Ali. Good night, guys. See you on Monday night, 7 p.m. with George Kinsaka. <laughs>